Live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas with theCUBE here at the Splunk Conference, Doc Conference 2014, hashtag SplunkConf. Um, I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. Our next guest is Chris Grant with Group Health Cooperative. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, good to be here. So healthcare has got a lot of data. <laughs> <laughs> it's in all kinds of silos with all the regulations, but really the trend is really to consumerize it um, and make it you know, more insightful, more available. Um, still a challenge, but still everyone, that's a demand. So sure. talk, about, talk about the dynamics of data in, in your role and how Splunk's helping you. Sure, sure. So we have, um, uh, as, as Group Health Cooperative, uh, we have a lot of data obviously from a uh, both from a patient perspective as well as from um, an insurance perspective. And so we have uh, the, the best of both worlds and from a security perspective and a data management perspective, sometimes it can be the worst of both worlds. But it's, a, um, it's empowering to the organization to be able to look at both sides of that equation. And uh, big data and data analytics is, is the way to harness that and to make it a, uh, a market differentiator, where there's a lot of organizations that aren't able to do that. And, and I think in, um, as, we, uh, as we get further down that path, um, we'll, uh, we'll find a lot of opportunities and a lot of uh, uh, business relevant scenarios once we get into the data more and once we, we see what we have. I mean, it's one of those things where you have a lot of stakeholders, right? You have the right. consumers who want value to just get stuff done, get health health care, right? right? And there's also costs involved for them, but also you have other stakeholders who really have protection needs, right? They want to make sure there's some security, you mentioned that. So how do you balance the stakeholders and what have you guys done that's been um, uh, transformative with the data? How have you guys, have you guys done anything that you say, wow, that's been pretty amazing? So we've done, um, well most recently, and, and I'll, I'll pivot a little bit off of that, is that, um, in healthcare, as a uh, as a provider of care, uh, patient privacy is of an utmost concern to the organization and obviously to the patients. You know, in this era of data breaches and data compromise and um, data not being where it's supposed to be or kept where it's supposed to be, um, patient privacy is is more and more a uh, something that consumers demand. And we've built actually a, uh, a patient uh, privacy monitoring application on top, of, uh, on top of Splunk that gives us the ability to provide a, uh, a, a better way to see um, potential privacy issues and to um, go have conversations with folks to understand what was this access to this record about and is it for a valid business purpose? And um, it's something that every healthcare organization that, that has patient data struggles with. Um, it, and um, there are solutions in the marketplace, but uh, we decided that uh, we were going to buy, uh, buy Splunk and we were going to uh, build an application on top of it to look at uh, that particular set of data, that particular set of access logs, and derive value out of that for our patients and for the organization, um, creating dashboards that, um, and scoring systems that allow us to easily discern um, what needs to be investigated and, and what isn't worth the time. Um, because uh, there's a lot of valid uh, business uh, use cases for, for looking at, obviously, uh, uh, patient records, uh, but not all of them are, and so you have to get into the data, you have to look at um, scenarios, and, and from, from log data, um, out of that, you can really uh, create effective, um, effective processes and, and get, get answers uh, quickly. Um, it really, uh, instead of creating a uh, an application or creating a report, which is sort of the traditional way to think about these things. Uh, with Splunk, we can create a dashboard and we can create an interactive experience that'll uh, let the people that are looking into these things quickly go through the, the, the scenarios, the detected accesses, and uh, quickly determine uh, what needs to be looked into further and, and what doesn't, what's not worth the time and, and uh, and that Splunk has really brought that to the table for us. 
So talk a little bit more about that actual process of building that application, because Splunk is an interesting company, because they're both an application company. They've got applications that, that right. you can, you can right. run right out of the box, but they've also got, essentially, they're, they've also, they're also a platform company providing SDKs and other tools right. to allow customers like yourself to actually build their own applications. So how would you grade them in terms of the, uh, the tools and the capabilities of actually building applications on top of Splunk? Ease of, ease of deployment, uh, sorry, ease of development, ease of deployment, um, and actually the, the developer experience. Well, so I'm not a developer, uh, full disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I, I won't be able to tell you how easy it is uh, from personal experience, but I will tell you that um, uh, one resource on my team built uh, the Splunk application we're talking about called Sentry. Um, we went from um, proof of concept to production deployment in four months. And uh, because it's the, the platform we can build off of, it, it went very quickly and very, uh, very easily. Uh, you know, we, I, would, I would think that there would be commercial vendors that do the same kind of thing that you wouldn't get anywhere near four months of deployment, no matter how, how easy they say it is. Um, it, it really never is, and um, Splunk ended up being uh, a way for us to do that. Yeah. Um, so let's take a step back and just talk about security generally. So clearly security analytics is a use case for big data analytics, but I'm curious from a healthcare perspective, mm -hmm. security is also a barrier. You talked a little bit about, um, obviously people have privacy concerns, the application you built is to help monitor those kind of things. Do you feel like the security and privacy challenges in the healthcare space are kind of holding back uh, that vertical from really exploiting big data for, for, to its full advantage? You know, I think there is um, challenges in the healthcare vertical um, when it comes to uh, harnessing new technologies and when it comes to, um, because it really comes down to, you need to get creative, it's all about the people, um, really. Um, you need to find uh, creative people that are relentless for searching out answers and then a tool like Splunk as a framework where you can you can dive in and build your own uh, uh, application on top of it using the queries you want and the design you want um, gets you above the fray of basic IT implementation and development. You can do a higher level thinking at that point because you've got a, uh, a foundation to work from, which, which is what Splunk provides. Um, healthcare in general has been challenged uh, from a technology and from a, a data perspective, I think, for a long time because of uh, larger sort of economic forces that are in that vertical. Um, but we're seeing, I think we're seeing those things change um, as the healthcare industry is changing, adoption of tools is changing, um, the mindset is changing around how, uh, you know, how can we be more effective and how can we be more, um, how can we drive toward outcomes rather than just independently saying, how can an insurance company make the most money they can? How can a hospital make the most money they can? We get down to uh, data-driven outcomes mm -hmm. where we, we look at what does the research show uh, for uh, uh, patient care over the last 50 years for this particular kind of condition. Um, getting into that drives, here's actually what we need to be doing from a, from a procedure standpoint, from a um, from a care standpoint to drive to the outcomes that make the most sense based on what the data is. Um, and since the economics are changing where it's um, not purely about profit anymore, you can get down to better outcomes uh, by getting to the data and you need tools to do that. And I think the entire industry is, is going that direction. There's lots and lots of partnerships happening between uh, care providers and between health plans for exactly that reason. Mm -hmm. um, well, that, that's an, an interesting point because part of the challenge is, of course, sharing data amongst providers and making it more mm -hmm. interoperable. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a, you know, you're a, um, a patient going to you know one hospital mm -hmm. for one treatment and then another clinic, they may not the systems may not talk to one another. They may not share data. Right. You've got privacy concerns. You've got insurance companies that may hold on to their data a little tighter than others. How much of this is a technology problem, and how much of it is a how much of it is a, a cultural or even some extent legal regulatory challenge? Sure. Well, what's interesting is that uh, in the healthcare space, I'm, I'm fairly new to the healthcare space. Most of my background is financial services and security and financial services. Uh, but healthcare is really um, it's a people oriented business. Um, a lot of the um, uh, people are in healthcare simply because they want to help 
take better care of, of people, which um, means that people's hearts are in the right place, which is a great place to start. Um, from there, you, you have to get people's minds in the right place. And, um, and so there is, uh, I, I don't necessarily know that it's a cultural issue from a, um, purely from uh, uh, people not wanting to do it. Um, there is a, an, an entrenched need for people to help people in healthcare. Um, so that's solid. The cultural challenge is getting out of the mindset that we have to maintain our old technologies and we have to s stay with tried and true, um, which from a care perspective, maybe that's what you want to do because tried and true is the safest option. But from a technology perspective, there's some room there to uh, try new ways of thinking and, and try new technologies. And it's about getting the right minds around the right tools to be able to do that. And then, I, then it becomes really powerful. Um, the privacy concerns are, are real, but they're, uh, um, everybody's held to sort of the same standard. Um, the HIPAA is there for a reason, and we all have to uphold the controls that are in HIPAA and high tech um, and the final omnibus rule that came out. Uh, so it's not necessarily that the regulations are preventing it, I don't think. Um, I think that they are, they're generally there to support it and, and the way that uh, those regulations are written and designed, they're very flexible um, about how it's, uh, uh, what's appropriate for your organization. Um, so it's not necessarily about that that's preventing it. Um, it's about uh, getting the right people with the right tools with the right sort of mission and drive um, and then, uh, then I think we can solve a lot of problems. Chris, what do you think about the, um, it's just a comment, I think we got some great uh, commentary going on on uh, Twitter and CrowdChat. Uh, it's, um, Tim Crawford says, interesting perspective for healthcare, data-driven outcomes. We can it brings up this notion, and I, I commented, what do you think about, talking to Tim, what do you think about the big trends in health IT? It's in need of transformation in a big, parenthesis, data way, in a big way. So, obviously this change afoot. Uh, what's your take on data-driven outcomes? Is that something that's being talked about in IT? Is that or is it still more of the old old guard? And what big data transformations do you see happening in, in, in healthcare in general? There is a significant movement around uh, data-driven outcomes, and, and uh, my organization has thought that for a long time. We've had uh, we've been both a, a payer and a provider for a long time, so that's just inherent in how we think. Um, there's a lot of organizations that that's a, a new concept for, um, but. And, and actually, like scary, or just that they're not paying attention. Um, <laughs> they haven't had incentive. I think is really what it comes okay. down to. There's been enough profit and um, in not dealing with each other um, that they haven't had to have those data-driven outcomes. And so, uh, but the industry is changing as a whole. Uh, data analytics is very much a part of of every. Um, I would say every board conversation that's that's paying attention to their organization. Uh, the, uh, we have the ability now, it used to be that we didn't have the technology to look at all the data. Now we have the technology, we just need to uh, set it up in a way that we can get value out of it. Um, and, and actually, uh, you'll see that uh, you know, data-driven outcomes has been a part of the culture of healthcare for quite a while. If you look at the organizations that have research institutes pr um, from a primary care perspective, there, there's a lot of organizations that have spun up research institutes for specifically that purpose. And so th there, is a, uh, there is a culture of data-driven outcomes at the uh, primary care level in, in a lot of organizations, but it's, it's uh, fairly new to broadly have a, a data-driven outcomes from a broad sort of industry perspective to tie both a provider and a payer in, into that picture. You know, it's easy for people to point, hey, get off my lawn, or hey, I need that, and everyone's always kind of gripe, hey, I want some stuff. But uh, the question I want to ask you is, do you see it as a platform technology challenge, like the right tech in place, or is it a user experience expectation issue, the users? Um, because it's pretty complicated. We hear about feed ingestion, from um, uh, these guys, the feed extractor, some of the analytics that Splunk's doing is very interesting because it could almost it could almost abstract away all that wrangling and all the structure, which is an inhibitor in the sense right. of it's complicated. Right. So is it a platform tech issue or is it the users that are stuck in the mud or both? <laughs> I think it's probably I think it's probably <laughs> both. Um, it, it, it's it's uh, you know having technology. It, 
that gives you the ability to get above the fray of the mechanics of data is really empowering. And you can really start thinking about higher level issues and not worry so much about the plumbing and how everything is connected. And, and so you have to get the people into the right mindset to be able to take advantage of that. And you have to get the technology in place to be able to develop and support that. And it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a trivial problem. Um, we know we have the capability. Um, uh, it's just about spending the time and energy to do it, I think. Well, that's, that's interesting. Let's unpack that a little bit. So getting to the point where you're looking at higher level issues and not worrying about the plumbing so much, sounds like, um, you could potentially be talking about using the cloud, whether it's public or private, to, to help do those kind of things. Sure. Um, to some extent, services, service organizations to come in and help you architect systems. How, how, how does Splunk specifically help you do that? Um, and what are your thoughts on using the cloud to do some of that more infrastructure level work, um, particularly in the healthcare space, which, again, not always the most forward looking in terms of the technology adoption? Well, and. and so I, I don't know that I'll have a full answer for that because I think it's a great question. Um, cloud capabilities give us the more, uh, give us more processing power and more, uh, you know, dynamic um, uh, infrastructure than we've ever had before. The, the part where we struggle with in healthcare is that a lot of cloud providers are challenged to actually support the regulations that we're under. Um, so it's not necessarily that the technology is the issue, it's more so that the, uh, the organizations uh, uh, that provide cloud services need to step up and meet the need of their customers. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it, we're, that's improving over time, uh, but it, it, if an organization can get by without the overhead of doing all of those compliance things, especially a startup cloud provider, they will. They, they'll go to the customers that aren't regulated first, <laughs> and then they will start looking at how they can support others. Yeah, it sounds like, we're, I mean, we're moving in that direction where potentially we're going to get to almost vertically focused cloud services and cloud providers who can adapt to and, and provide the type of regulation and privacy and security uh, capabilities that a healthcare organization would need versus a retail organization versus financial services right. where we're yep. before. Agreed. And we're seeing, you know, AWS is taking steps to do that in terms of providing uh, HIPAA compliance and things mm -hmm. like that, but it is, clearly we've got a little ways to go, but it sounds like that's the direction we're moving. Yeah, it, and it's, uh, the technology can support um, all of these things uh, that we want to do. Um, it's a matter of uh, um, being legally protected. It's always, uh, you know, it's a contract. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You always need to make sure the lawyers are happy, of which I, I report to one, so yeah. I'm very familiar with that. Um, and then uh, um, getting the right people and the right minds and the right tools, um, you know, I, I think they're all solvable. Mm -hmm. It's just a complicated picture. Okay, Chris, <laughs> we really appreciate you coming on board. We're going to kick it over to the keynotes, so uh, we're going to Flip it to the big stage here. This is the Cube. We are expecting to see them from the noise. That's what we do. And we're excited to be here live in Las Vegas at the Splunk Conference. We'll be right back after the keynotes. Stay, stay tuned for more Cube. But let's right now go to the keynotes live on the big stage. We'll be right back.